a change of heart or a change of mind. The U.S. calls Pakistan's tribal areas with $750 million in a bid to choke off support for al-Qaeda and the Taliban. It's a tactic that has worked well in Iraq, but can Pakistan's wild west be tamed? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Hashim Ahelbara. Washington seems increasingly impatient, but attempts to establish a concrete presence in Pakistan's tribal areas are apparently still being rebuffed by President Pervez Musharraf. It's reported he's dismissed U.S. attempts for more latitude over CIA missions or combat troops in the region, seen as a breeding ground for al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Meanwhile, Washington insists it's about to start spending in earnest some $750 million, its earmark to improve social and economic conditions in the tribal areas. It claims the money will help win over hearts and minds by providing jobs, education and health care. There are doubts, though, about what effects these efforts will have, where the money will actually go to and, indeed, what the real motives are. The federally administered tribal areas lie along Pakistan's northwest frontier with Afghanistan. This mountainous region runs 2,400 kilometers along the Afghan border. The lawless province sees people, arms and drugs crossing through very easily. The tribal areas are almost completely autonomous. The Pakistani courts and police have no jurisdiction here. Some figures suggest the tribal areas are home to some 6 million people. But rigid traditions and scarce resources have meant little in terms of development for the people in the tribal areas. And it's where some say Bin Laden and his followers are still hiding out. Joining us to discuss this issue are our guests in London, Shahid Qurashi, writer for the Frontier Post in Washington, D.C., Hasib Humayun, a researcher analyst at the Middle East Institute. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for joining us. Mr. Shahid. A U.S. pledge worth $750 million US dollar with more cash that could follow from other wealthy nations in the tribal areas. What the Americans are trying to say here? Well, I think uh, the Americans have probably realized that it's time to start the healing process because they've been bombing this area for a while. Um, and uh, as far as the development aid in this area is concerned, it is, uh, which is quite welcoming, but as far as the motives are concerned uh, behind this aid are not clear. I mean, especially the critics in Pakistan are wondering that uh, what is the motives of uh, opening five Indian information centers and cons consulates b along the uh, Pakistani borders, which are more than the uh, uh, Indian consulates in India, uh, in the United States. Uh, so the p critics over there are quite uh, sort of uh, critical about these double sort of policy okay, towards Mr. Pakistan and, and India. Mr. Hasib is to talk about cash, but at the same time talk about allowing CIA more latitude in uh, operating in the tribal uh, areas. Is this something that has been prompted by the situation in Afghanistan? Uh, I think if you have to, uh, this whole, uh, let, let me track back and talk about the aid, the $750 million aid uh, that's being earmarked for the tribal areas. What's happening here is it's a five-year plan. It's a five-year plan that will be dispersed in uh, uh, sort of fractions of $150 million a year. And this is, this is something that's coming a bit late, but nonetheless, it's welcome. Uh, you, you, our guest, uh, you guest in, these, uh, in, in London is talking about the, this, the motives behind it. I think what's clear, uh, what's the motive behind this whole package is uh, for the United States aims to, in a way, pacify certain uh, the radicalization of the uh, parts of the tribal areas and in a way offer a rather alternative to uh, the uh, money or the aid or any form of uh, resources that come from the radical elements who seem to be one of the few well-resourced uh, well -resourced Ex people within that region. Well, Mr. Hasif, the concern now is will the Americans succeed? Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Qurashi, we have been following the American policy in the region for the last six years, and it seems that their policy has been alternating between diplomacy, carrot and stick policy. Why have they had to wait for six years to say, well, we've made some mistakes in the tribal areas and let's fix things? Well, I think the, uh, the, the problem with the American policy is that they, they don't have a policy at all. They just jumped into uh, this war without a plan and then uh, more 
interestingly and uh, ironically they didn't have an exit uh, exit strategy or exit plan for this uh, for this region keeping in view their experience uh, during the soviet era i mean they must have uh, a lot of uh, input and the understanding of the people in the region yeah. but the fundamental uh, understanding of these people living in that region is that soul is not for sale so if the americans really want to win the hearts and minds all they need to do is to leave Afghanistan because occupation is the major problem for the people uh, living in Fatah or living in Afghanistan and also the 2.5 million Afghan refugees living in Pakistan. They could be a breeding ground of angry Afghans who are angry about the occupation of their country. So this is, this is what, what, what is more important. And uh, interestingly, as far as the Al-Qaeda factor or a Taliban factor is concerned, Many critics are, are, are of the opinion at the moment that the, uh, it is not as big as, the, as it been magnified and Ms. glorified Mr. In, the, in, the, in the West and the okay. United States. Mr. Hassib, are the, Americans, uh, are the Americans trying to apply the Iraqi model, which is a sense of uh, saying that let's countenance those who were our enemies in the past and try to bring them into the political arena? Uh, I think what you need to, what we need to understand here is that this is, uh, we're diagnosing the problem as lack of legitimacy in there, and this is a historic issue. The, over time, what has happened within these tribal, so-called traditional societies, is that the role of the tribal leader has uh, uh, has been, in a way, destroyed by uh, rather fanatics who, who have some sources of income. Uh, this plan may help, in a way, at least, uh, at least uh, offer another so, uh, a set of resources for people who are moderate to use and to uh, reestablish their authority in that region. This has nothing to do with the U.S. Uh, uh, intervention or, US pr or international presence in Afghanistan. Uh, the trouble within these regions is a historic one. This was, uh, this was coming. Everybody should have seen it. The problem is no uh, people were sleeping to it. That's a whole different issue. But uh, I th and this, is a lot, this has a lot to do with the fact that this area, the so-called tribal areas has, has had an historic neglect by the Pakistani state in general. M many in Pakistan do, don't uh, don't pay much heed to this region. And uh, if you look one, I'll try, I'll throw one statistic out there, and you could just judge how much it takes. Only it's there's 1,200 people for one doctor in normal uh, in the rest of Pakistan, and there are 7,000 people in Fatah, and then one doctor for them uh, based on mm. statistics. So you have. You have that ratio. It's really about neglect, and it's about people having we'll, we'll felt definitely go uh, fed up. Mr. And uh, Hasib, then we'll definitely a, go into detail yes. about the uh, implications of the new uh, inter U.S. interest in the tribal area. But joining us also in this discussion from Naples in Florida is John Esposito, professor at Georgetown University. Mr. Esposito, is this a way of saying that, sorry guys, for the last six years we failed to understand the very essential elements of the, of the fabric of the Af uh, Pakistani society and now it's time to look uh, with more interest into the tribal area? I think that, that if that's the case, then I think that needs to be articulated because I think that one of the concerns that's necessary uh, to keep in mind is that yes, the tribal areas have been greatly neglected by Pakistani governments historically, not just the recent one, but the United States is operating in a world in which it is often seen and has been seen to be interventionist and unilateral. And, and the Pakistan situation vis-a-vis -vis the tribal areas is particularly sensitive. And so the announcement of this package, unless one is very specific about what kinds of things are going to be forthcoming, is it going to be funding for medical, educational, etc. But if that's, you know, unless that's very specific, and given the unpopularity of the Musharraf government, uh, this could easily um, backfire uh, on the U.S. Uh, Mr. John, now, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Qureshi, you seem to suggest that the uh, move w won't be welcomed by the people in the tribal areas. Well, we know it's been semi-autonomous for many, many years, riddled with corruption and very powerful uh, tribal leaders. Don't you think that could be a fertile ground for the Americans to just step up and impose their own agenda there? Well, I think if the Americans do it, that's the, uh, I, I, I I, I think that there's a real problem there. You know, yes, it's, it's, it's an area that, that's been very troubled. Yes, there are major problems there. But, but, but the question is, who are the 
Pakistani partners going to be in this initiative who have credibility? Otherwise, you're simply talking about the danger is it will be seen as yet another example of the, United, of the U.S. Uh, intervening. And the problem is we've already had that problem uh, with regard to the way in which – uh, the, the U.S. invasion and, quote, occupation of Iraq. Let's involve Mr. Seen. Shahid Qurashi. Mr. Shahid, what do you think of what, what Mr. Esposito yeah, just said? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, uh, well, what I'm saying is that the Americans probably haven't learned uh, anything. And uh, as far as the tribal areas are concerned, tribal areas are part of Pakistan. They are functioning, or they've been functioning historically under a, uh, under their own cultural and agreement with the uh, with the leader at the time of his Pakistan's establishment. But the more importantly, the economic losses suffered by the Pakistan's economy overall, between 2001 to 2004, U.S. Central Command suggested that there was losses were about 10 billion dollar, and keeping in view Pakistan's import. I mean, 11, more than 1,100 uh, military personnel have been killed in this uh, war on terror, uh, which is more than the Pakistani soldiers lost in 1965 war. Uh, now, all of a sudden, the Americans are sort of uh, concerned about these tribal areas, and uh, uh, critics are saying that, that this tribal area will have more resistant, as President Musharraf has said, than the Americans and the other troops Mr. are facing Hasib. in Afghanistan. Mr. Hasib, don't you think of the Americans, by investing on the tribal area, they, are, they have their eyes set on Afghanistan? Because we know that the uh, development of the uh, situation there is turning against the American wishes and plans, and that they know that some of the Al-Qaeda and Taliban operatives could be easily moving in that area. Uh, Asham, I think I, I think you uh, you're right in some ways to say that the U.S. is uh, in a way uh, motivated by the fact that uh, this area, this uh, this area along the Afghan border, uh, is being used as a sanctuary or is being used uh, as a movement back and forth of the insurgents in Afghanistan and then Al Qaeda elements and whatnot. So there is some element to that. Yes, it'll be it'll be misleading to say that this has no counterinsurgency or counter terror element to it. Actually, the USAID uh, plan for that region is specifically states that this is a uh, counter-terror effort to, uh, to begin with. Uh, and as for, uh, so, uh, so exactly, you, you're right, there, this has something to do with the uh, elevated concerns about Afghanistan and about the uh, uh, level of violence. That so has all the issue up, is politically uh, mo motivated and it has nothing to do with just uh, t uh, caring about uh, people in the tribal area. Mr. Esposito. Those planners sitting in Washington I would, I would assume that the U.S. planners were say, thinking that the vistas opened up by turning people in tribal area friendly outweighs the backlash. But as someone who has been uh, following events in this region, I can tell you that the elements of, a, of backlash are already there because nobody believes in the American policy in the region. Oh, I, I think you're right. I think it would be extraordinarily naive, but I wouldn't be surprised if those that have recommended this policy. Uh, uh, you know, I still uh, have no sense of what's going on in the region. Uh, I have a new uh, co-authored book coming out this month based on Gallup data uh, that represents the voices of a billion Muslims in 35 countries and significant numbers of Muslims, as, is, as will be obvious to you and many of your uh, viewers, significant numbers of Muslims consistently say that they are concerned about U.S. intervention, uh, in their uh, in their area, and this will simply be uh, seen by many as a who will look at it and just cynically say this is clearly an extension of U.S. intervention. It, it's all about counterterrorism. It's not about really improving the lot of the people there. It's a last ditch stand. It's time, gentlemen. And so uh, I think this could be a very counterproductive uh, policy. Time for a short break. And when we come back, we ask, is winning the hearts and minds in the tribal area an easy task? Stay with us.